Hello and welcome to the 18 WJTS News on this Monday, October 14th. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm Joey Rowe reporting. Due to ongoing work on the backup water supply project, the Jasper Municipal Water Department will be turning the water off on Tuesday, October 15th from 8 a.m. until approximately 5 p.m. The 13 water customers affected reside in Windsong Estates on the east side of North Portersville Road and include Fieldcrest Lane, Marywood Drive, south of Fieldcrest Lane, and one home on at 4180 North Portersville Road. Once the water is turned back on, a boil advisory will go into effect until further notice. The boil advisory will last a minimum of 48 hours or until two consecutive water samples pass their testing. Residents affected are asked to boil their water for five minutes before human and pet consumption. The water remains safe for bathing. If you have any questions concerning the boil advisory, you can call the Jasper Municipal Water Department at 812-482-5252. The Jasper Electric Department and Jasper Street Department will close West 9th Street between St. John Street and Hendrick Street starting at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, October 15th. This closure will be to remove two trees that have become hazards. The street should reopen by 4 p.m. on Tuesday. Motorists should use Clay Street, West 8th Street, and Bartley Street as a detour. The closure will take place barring inclement weather or any other unforeseen events. The community came together in a big way at the Howl at the Moon fundraiser on October 4th, raising over $25,000 in support of Mentors for Youth of Dubois County. With more than 200 attendees, the evening was a huge success featuring dinner, drinks, dancing, an exciting auction, and a lively dueling piano performance. The funds raised will directly benefit the mentoring programs that serve local youth, providing them with opportunities for professional growth, connection, and support through meaningful relationships with mentors. For more information about Mentors for Youth of Dubois County or how you can get involved, visit MentorsForYouth.com. Dubois County voters are gearing up to exercise their right to vote in the upcoming election. Early voting began last Monday, October 8th, allowing residents to cast their ballots at various locations throughout the county. Early voting will take place at the Courthouse Annex in Jasper through November 1st with hours from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. and extended hours until 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. Special Saturday voting hours will also be available on October 26th and November 2nd from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. The 35th Street Fire Station in Jasper will serve as an early voting site from October 28th through November 2nd with voting hours from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m and special Saturday hours on November 2nd from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. The Huntingburg Event Center in Tri-County YMCA in Ferdinand will also be open for early voting on October 26th and November 2nd from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. In addition, roaming board locations will be available from October 28th through November 1st with hours from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. at various sites, including St. Henry CK of A, the Schnellville Fire Department, Dubois Library, and Bird's Eye Fire Department. On Election Day, November 5th, voting will be conducted from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. at several locations, including the Jasper Moose Lodge, the Ten Clark Cultural Center, St. Mary Community Center in Ireland, the Huntingburg Event Center, Holland United Methodist Church, St. Anthony Community Center, Tri-County YMCA, Dubois Ruritan Park, and the Celestine Community Club. Registered voters in Dubois County can vote at any open election sites. The Dubois County Habitat for Humanity has announced they have new leadership at its ReStore located in Huntingburg. With this transition, the store remains dedicated to offering affordable home improvement materials while continuing its mission of building homes and strengthening communities. In celebration of the management change, ReStore will hold a special sale from October 16th through the 19th. Customers can enjoy a 30% discount on all items, including furniture, home goods, and building materials. This sale offers a chance to save on essential items while supporting a great cause. The ReStore invites the community to come explore the updates and thanks everyone for their ongoing support. 
Again, the ReStore is located in Huntingburg and the address is 4232 South 170 East and their hours are Wednesday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. A benefit for baby Claire Berg is being planned for this Friday, October 18th at the St. Minerid Knights of Columbus. Claire is the daughter of Rachel and Eric Berg and was born on August 15th at only 22 weeks, weighing 1 pound and 1.4 ounces. She is currently in the NICU at Riley's Hospital and has a long road ahead. Beginning at 4.30 p.m. Central, shrimp dinners will be sold and will include shrimp, fries, and slaw. Chicken and dumplings will also be available as well as baked goods. All proceeds from the event will go to Rachel and Eric to help with medical bills and travel expenses. An account for donations has been set up at the Spencer County Bank and donations can also be made via Venmo. For more information, you can contact Carol Tresh, Rachel's Ann at 812-309-8523. The Indiana Department of Transportation has announced a road closure for State Road 145 in Orange County. Beginning on or around today, Monday, October 14th, crews will close State Road 145 in Orange County near French Lick. This closure will occur between Wildwood Lake Road and Old State Road 145. This road closure will allow for a slide correction and surface erosion correction project to be performed. Work is expected to last throughout the week depending on weather conditions. The official detour for the project is State Road 56 to US 231 to State Road 64. Local traffic will have access up to the points of closure. The Shoals Lady Jug Rock softball team has been awarded a $9,000 grant from the Martin County Community Foundation as part of its recent quarterly grant cycle. This funding will be used to add a new press box to the softball field, enhancing the facilities for players and spectators alike. The grant is one of several contributions from the Martin County Community Foundation, which has supported various improvement projects for the team over time. For updates on the project, you can visit the Shoals Softball Facebook page. Indiana has joined 19 other states in filing a lawsuit challenging a federal rule that Republican attorneys general will force nursing homes to close. The rule requires having a registered nurse on site at all hours, residents getting at least .55 hours of care from an RN every day, and residents getting 2.45 hours of care from a nursing aide daily as well. The lawsuit says the rule is a heavy-handed mandate that does not address the legitimate challenges nursing homes face. The Potoka 2000 2024 Pluck-A Duck, formerly known as the Duck Race, is now selling ducks for the event. Sponsoring a duck costs $5 for one or $10 for three, and money goes towards helping the, uh, continue the beautification of Jasper. The event will take place on Wednesday, October 16th at 6 p.m. in front of City Hall during the October Shop and Sip. Those wishing to purchase ducks can fill out a form and either mail or deliver it in person to the Jasper Chamber of Commerce. The form and payment must be received by the Chamber be before the start of the race. You must be 18 years or older to enter. The entry form for the Plucky Duck event can be found on our website. Get ready for an evening of family fun as the Harlem Wizards take on the Martin County Marvels on Friday, November 1st at Lagodi High School with doors opening at 6 p.m. and the game starting at 7 o'clock. The game is part of a special event where local legends and leaders will come together to support Opportunity for All with 4-H. Tickets are $10 if purchased before the event and children four years and younger can attend for free. You can order tickets online at harlemwizards.com or pick them up in person at the Martin County Extension Office. And that's been news here on 18 WJTS-TV. We will take a trip to the city square with Jasper Mayor Dean Vonderheide to talk about phase two of the downtown revitalization project for our Monday with the Mayor segment right after this.